uh, Steve King of Iowa uh, made a comment. Of course, he's endorsed these white nationalists in Austria and actually said that if they were in the United States, they would be Republicans. All right, folks, back to our Roadmark Unfiltered video in just one moment. I want to thank one of our uh, newest supporters. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk about this, talk to you about right now. If you're looking for a hot new investment opportunity, I have two things I want you to think about, legal marijuana and crowdfunding. Now, you just let that sink in for a second. Our friends at Transatlantic Real Estate have created a unique opportunity for everyday investors like you to get in the game for as little as 300 bucks. Uh, typically, it takes millions or billions to invest in the legal marijuana industry some folks, we're going to leave that alone. But uh, and it can be pretty risky uh, trying to establish market share. However, Transatlantic Real Estate is taking a different approach. They buy the land that supports marijuana grow operations and lease it to licensed, high-paying tenants. Now imagine being a landlord to licensed marijuana farm with the prospect of further legalization and changing public perceptions about marijuana. Some investors could end up making serious money over the next few years in this multi-billion dollar industry. The best part is they're using crowdfunding so you can get in now before they take the company public. If you want more information, go to MarijuanaStock.org. That's MarijuanaStock.org. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video. This is the same Steve King, of course, Republican from Iowa, who has made all kind of racist comments in the past. Uh, and he also endorsed the white nationalist who's running for mayor in Toronto. Crazy. But so, but check this out. Uh, and so many folks went after Steve King. Then it was discovered that companies like AT&T, Purina, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, and others actually were gave money to the campaign of Steve King. Well, Purina announced a couple of hours ago that their political action committee is withdrawing their funds uh, from and will no longer uh, fund Steve King. He's running in Iowa. He's about, uh, he's actually is neck and neck. Uh, he's up one point against the Democratic challenger, which is also shocking there. And uh, of course, many people have challenged Republicans to call him out. Well, one Republican finally did with the National Republican Congressional Committee. Uh, pull the tweet up, please. Uh, you actually see this here. Steve Stivers, Congressman Steve King's recent comments, actions and retweets are completely inappropriate. We must stand up against white supremacy and hate in all forms. And I strongly condemn this behavior. Guess who has not said a word? Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the House, or Mitch McConnell, of course, the Senate Majority Leader, and other Republicans in leadership. Going to you, Eton, then, um, uh, then uh, Spencer. Again, luckily this guy says something. I will appreciate that. But Steve King has been a known racist in the Republican Party for a very long time. The racist comments that he has made are quite consistent, and he has no problem making white supremacist statements. Well, everything is documented. I mean, you, you can't go into the falsehood to say that they didn't, they didn't know. Or, you know, before they say, well, what has Trump said that was racist? You know, who does he support that is racist? Well, you know, everything is documented, but you're supporting him anyway. You know, right now, nothing that Trump says surprises me. <laughs> he is exactly who we thought he was. Right. Right. right? I agree. But, but what, what surprises me is the number of people who are still supporting him. Right. That does surprise me. You know, no, that does, does well, surprise we, me. Well, the, no. reason why, well, the reason why is because we remember we were supposed to be moving away from all of this. We were supposed, America was supposed to be changing. You know, and it, and it actually gotten, has gotten worse since Trump has taken office. The number of white supremacists that have been documented have, has gone up since Trump take, took office. Everything has gone up. Everything has been worse. So now you have a, a, a polarizing, you know, no figure of or Donald Trump that stands in front of the entire world and says he's a nationalist. There's no more excuses right now. You know exactly who he is. So if you are supporting Trump, this is exactly what you're supporting. And, and, and Derek, I, I need to push back on you here in terms of this notion of kind of both sides is both sides, mm -hmm. right? We're not talking about just framing racial language here. We're talking about violence here. You know, a bullet with somebody's name mm -hmm. on it. We see these pipe bombs across the country. We see this uh, a synagogue uh, being shot up here, right? And and, and the from the top, how we've we, got... I don't think you put the synagogue into this because there were shootings under the last administration, too. No, hold on. The, with the synagogue, it was a hate crime. It was a hate crime. That guy, I'm sorry, was, it was a little... Crime, they got, I, I think the, it was a hate Hate crime for the shooting in the South Carolina church shooting. That was a hate crime too. Oh, the, that was a no, I, I think that's right. But you certainly didn't have a president who said 
uh, you know, this is an okay environment and it's fine to, I, I, to, to, to throw a, okay a, a, a... No, 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 no. no, no, no. He, he created an environment. He created an environment where he says, hey, you can slam... Uh, anybody who slams a journalist like this is okay by me. You didn't hear that from the past president. You didn't hear this kind of macho, physical piece. Oh, they're bad people on either side. No, you'd have a president who'd say, hey, this is evil. This is wrong. Yeah, who would we, step up to the plate. I think we have, you know, in past presidencies, we've had conservative um, presidents, you know, where that type of rhetoric and that type of negative energy was not spoken of. So I think, you know, right now we have, you know, a president who's pretty much outwardly saying, you know, uh, I disavow this, this is unwanted, this this is what's expected. I am with the nationalists. I, I am with also prosperity. Basically, we have a president that's showing uh, he is the American dream. And, you know, and he shows that through his finances. He shows that through his wealth. And now he's showing that through strength and power. But what I don't, for me personally, I, I don't care for how he's actually portraying what power looks like. And as he compares it to other countries. So, I mean, U.S. is its own, right? Um, we have our own, you know... Peace. I mean, you know. Bad things are going to happen. The question is, what is the response to it, right? Agreed. Is there leadership in terms of responding to things, in terms of calling out what's bad and improper, in terms of violence, that kind of thing, right? But then also uh, trying to create an environment where folks can come together and move forward together. And we don't see that right now in terms of 1600 uh, Pennsylvania Avenue. Here's the thing. Now, <clears throat> I don't dispute anything you guys are saying. Mm -hmm. I don't. However, when you travel in different circles, there are people, believe it or not, in this country who believe that man is doing a great job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when you look outside of urban cities, Washington, right. D.C., right. Atlanta, Chicago, mm -hmm. New York, mm -hmm. the rest of the country sees things a lot different than what we do. Right. And it's unfortunate in some cases. Mm -hmm. But that's where we are right now with this guy. Mm -hmm. And I had the opportunity to participate in a, a, a town hall forum in Baltimore a couple of weeks ago that was put on by Ozzy.com. And they're going to do these forums, town hall meetings in several countries, I mean, several cities. It's Carlos Watson. Carlos yep. Watson. Right. And so in Baltimore, it was 100 mm -hmm. black men. Right. Mm -hmm. And so one of the panelists was, uh, was this Raj Torres, Torres, the guy who founded Black Guns Matter. Mm -hmm. And the question came to him was, is, uh, is the American dream still alive and are you optimistic that it is? Right. And he had a very interesting answer. And he said, I'm not optimistic. He said, but what I am, I'm strategic about what's going on right now. And he was strategic in, ter in terms of funding, finding that organization under this administration. Now we've got two more years, at least two more years of this guy and, and possibly six. And I think right now we all need to be strategic in how we maneuver with this administration because it is what it is right now. And we can sit up here and talk about all the things that are going wrong, and there are a lot of things going wrong that we don't agree with. But at the same time, what are we gonna do about it? And how do we maneuver through this administration and everything that's going on right now? Well, I think there's a lot that we can actually do about it. I, mean, I don't think you're, you're, you're kind of painting a picture as if we're kind of helpless. No, you know, no, with, no, not to well, paint that well, at all. Well, this is, I, I well, don't mean that to imply Well, that well this is what we, you have to be able to, to call it what it is. I mean, after the – I had a glimmer of hope for a second that maybe he would show a sign that was, that was a human side. You know, after, after the pipe bombs were sent to past presidents. <laughs> a to couple everything. people I, said I that. I had a glimmer of hope to think that he would come out and he would say that this was wrong. And then take responsibility to say that maybe I need to push right. back and, and about of my rhetoric and my and he atmosphere did for that I created. Right. No, he did not. He attacked the media. He attacked yeah. the Democrats. He, he pointed the finger at everybody else except for himself. Right. And, and this is getting in the way of campaigning. Right? Like, hey, we've only got a finite amount of time before. Right. Again, it's about me and my agenda no, as opposed to. Hey, what's the nation need? I'm the leader of this nation. Let me step up to the plate and, and, and provide some leadership in terms of the nation. Yeah. And I agree. I kind of agree with you guys. Okay, like I said, but then again, again, there's a there's a, there's another huge part of America wait, that thinks uh, it's got. So what is that strategic part portion? Strategic that you for want you. It, what's strategic for you? How can you maneuver within this administration? And, and, and what's best for you? But, but because nope. it, because here's the thing, right. ain't nothing going to change right, right now. Even okay. even with midterms, yeah, yeah, you actually, got midterms actually coming up. things Mid could change. Midterms coming next up right week. now, and so that will determine a lot. Right. And so um, polls are saying 
both sides. So mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting, and I would encourage everyone to get out and vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everyone to get out and vote, mm -hmm. regardless of who you're voting for. Right. I agree. So. No, I, I think I think that that is, is right, but I think there's this other piece, which is you can't just go along with the show in terms of the guy has been inconsistent and he no. has lacked kind of moral clarity and vision uh, here, right? And it hasn't been about the country. It's been about, you know, the Saudi piece. This, uh, the government is going to kill somebody in their own embassy and you, you're going to hem and holler and you can't step up to the plate and say that's a problem. <laughs>